Hi everyone, my name is Tim Rinusov. Uh, I'm the part of Pimin Village organizers and my talk today will be what happens when businesses decide to enroll cryptocurrency cards. So this is an overview of modern cryptocurrency card security and uh, it's in addition to the white paper that we published as well uh, on paymentvillage.org. So go there and look at the white pair paper if you're looking for technical details. This is just a 20 minute overview. So payment cards have a long history. Different forms of payments like Card Not Present or Max Stripe are definitely the oldest ones. And we have a video from the last year of Payment Village chapter how ancient form of forms of payments work. So go there, uh, check these videos, there are some lab tasks. And nowadays we have chip and contactless payments, the most modern forms of them. And my talk today is an overview of insecurities of these forms of payments related on, on cryptocurrency cards. But for the beginning, let, let's look at the differences between high street banks and crypto startups. So high street bank is a big organization, thousands of staff, highly regulated and uh, normally have all infrastructure in house also because of regulation. Then fintech companies are slightly smaller like up to 100 people and uh, because that they are fin and tech they really like to have some sort of hybrid infrastructure, store a lot of things in cloud, they may not even have banking license at the beginnings. And finally, crypto startups are the smallest ones here. So we all have like up to 10 people staff and normally crypto startup is essentially a mobile app which delivers the original service, just do payment exchange, uh, currency exchange and so on and so on. They probably will be cloud-based, they don't even have premises. Yeah, and they will like would like to buy additional services as a service. And uh, they just simply don't have enough resources to build everything from scratch. They don't have people, they don't have money. Uh, and this is why they probably will not make payments, uh, card payments by themselves from scratch. So not only they don't have resources for creating their own payments, you also cannot just simply invent your own card scheme that will start to be widely adopted next year. Yeah, so instead of that, they all will have to choose like Visa or MasterCard, Burger King or McDonald's. And once, once, once they've chosen, uh, they need to go and find a service provider that will work as a white label and provide all, all the card transactions and uh, enroll in the cards and all other uh, features. So the rules of game have been completely changed in the last decade. You now can enroll a new card for as little as four pounds and uh, you can create virtual cards immediately. You use these white label companies, for example, like Wirecard or Stripe that will do everything for you. Uh, all you need to come up is like a mobile application as a front for the customer and some business model. Yeah, and uh, the problem is Wirecard that was that in 2020, they got into administration because of money laundering. However, there are still a lot of competitors and this market is extremely hot. And that approach really works. And this is why we now have so many cryptocurrency cards on the market. Uh, these are announced just in July that their customers spend more than $1 billion 
in the first half of 2021 just on cards linked on cryptocurrency startup. I myself opened like dozens of these cards in the last one or two years trying to find the answer on a very simple question. Can vulnerabilities and flaws that were that are 50 years old could actually affect modern cryptocurrency cards. So what I've done, I took 10 crypto cards and uh, cryptocurrency cards and started looking at common insecurities of these cards, different fraud possibilities. Everyone is familiar with some of these issues are like 50 years old. And as the outcome of that, we created a checklist of must have security features and checks for businesses who really decide to enroll uh, these cards. So as I said, uh, the white paper is available on paymentvillage.org website and today I will just briefly skim through some of these checks. Uh, all issues and all security checks will be grouped by the form of payments and we will start with card not present. So card not present is a form of payment when you only need digits from your card. So merchants actually don't have a physical access to your card and uh, this is basically why it's called card not present. So card not present has only a few security features. To make a successful card not present payment you need card number, 16 digits, expiry date for digits and card security code CVV or CVC uh, which is only 999 possibilities. Not very secure, right? And this is why for a while uh, ago hackers started brute forcing card numbers, security codes, expiry dates and they still do this. It's quite a common attack called uh, distributed guessing attack or bin master attack and this is also why cards now have additional security feature that is called 3D Secure. So 3D Secure is a code that will be sent on your mobile device to confirm that you authorized the payment. So from 10 cryptocurrency cards that we check, only two of them allowed brute forcing of card security codes, which is still more, more than we expected. Also, two mobile apps really allowed stealing card details due to different vulnerabilities in mobile app. It's quite strange because, as I said, crypto startup is essentially a mobile app. Yeah, so uh, you should put a lot of emphasis in the AppSec field. And uh, all of these cards had 3D secure feature just because I opened all the all the cards I opened are in the UK and UK and EU all cards here now must have 3D secure. But you should understand that it's still possible to make payments with these cards without 3D secure on the websites that do not support them. For example, like Amazon or you simply will be able to buy plane tickets uh, without 3D secure using these cards. Uh, moving on, next form of payment is Mudstripe, also quite old and vulnerable <laughs> form of payment. Uh, main problem of Mudstripe is that Mudstripe had no additional authentication of payment, no cardholder verification and it is very easy to clone and very easy to pay uh, without any proof of ownership. So. Nowadays, Maxtripe is outdated and should not be used in stores simply because almost all Maxtripe cards now have chip that should be used for purchases. And, uh, but what happens is that in many regions still if you, will, if you can't use chip card you will be offered to use Maxtripe. So if you will enter a card upside down three times, post terminal would allow you to swipe card and basically to use Maxtripe. It is prohibited now in Europe, 
because of the current regulation, which is good, but in the US you still have a lot of places, a lot of malls where this feature will be enabled. So Terminal has a card reader, chip reader, and the original card had a working chip. However, hackers still could clone Maxtripe from the original card and use it to pay in stores, which is quite insane. Uh, another attack that we described last year is when hackers steal data, would steal data from BMV and put this data on the Maxtripe to create a functional clone of the chip card that had Maxtripe. And these transactions will go. Uh, but in our statistics, two cards, two cryptocurrency cards allowed using this uh, fallback feature and no cards really allowed us to clone cards uh, using data from EMV, which is good. Moving on to the last forms of payments, uh, chip or EMV or NFC or uh, contactless payments. So chip is a microcomputer with a Java application on it that implements three main security mechanisms of EMV cards. So first is the transaction authorization that is done with a unique cryptogram for each transaction. So each cryptogram is unique depending on the input of the cryptogram, date, amount, currency, and so on and so on. And this cryptogram will be checked on the issuing bank. Next, the authentication of the card for sort of offline risk assessment uh, to ensure uh, terminal actually can ensure that the card was genuinely issued by your bank and genuinely belong to you. Uh, not, not a clone, nothing like that is made with the asymmetric cryptography and uh, using RSA uh, to ensure that the card is genuine. Yeah, if you don't know when you go on the Metra and use your contactless card, yeah, uh, you are not authorized immediately, there is no online authorization just to speed the process up, yeah, you go, you using terminals are using offline data authentication to ensure that the card was not counterfeit. And only after, after minutes later, you the terminal will try to authorize the transaction online. So offline authentication is still quite essential feature. Uh, it also helps to protect the card uh, with another feature to protect the cardholder verification. And cardholder verification is the third feature of EMV. Uh, that, well, by its name, it helps to ensure that the cardholder actually is genuine, that he hasn't stolen the card from someone else. There are different cardholder verification methods, but the, it's like, could be signature, could be no cardholder verification, offline PIN, online PIN, but the most secure will be online PIN. Basically, you enter your PIN on the PIN pad, and it, the PIN has been encrypted on the PIN pad, and sent all across to the issuing bank uh, in encrypted form, where it will be decrypted and checked only in a very secure space, uh, which is called HSM, and you will get the result whether the PIN was uh, correct or not. Other forms of payments like offline PIN, signature, on no, no cardholder verification, obviously, are considered less secure. You can tamper offline PIN verification. Obviously, bank just doesn't know whether it was correct or not. There are security steps to uh, help with that, but not many banks actually, actually check it. And chip and signature scheme uh, is obviously less secure. You can just steal the card, leave, leave a signature and move on. Uh, there are many well-known issues and misconfigurations in EMV and NFC. 
but we will focus on two most popular and well known. So the first is authentication authorization bypass with the cryptogram replay when hackers could create environment where input for the cryptogram will be would be the same and they would be able to predict all the cryptograms for the next purchases and use them, reuse them many times in the future. And eight, nine out of ten banks, nine out of ten cards were actually vulnerable to this attack. One bank were vulnerable at the beginning, but by the by now they fixed this vulnerability, so I would consider them invulnerable. <laughs> uh, and the second problem is at the bypassing of cardholder verification. And the thing is that you can bypass cardholder verification only by bypassing offline authentication step. So there is a very popular attack, very famous attack that is called PinOK. Uh, basically, card will say, hey, pin that I checked offline is okay, yeah, and uh, you can generate transaction and move on. And bank does not check these fields correctly, and for many, many cards, offline pin verification is not the most priority, on the top of priority of cardholder verification methods, and this is why hackers also need to tamper these data, and this also only possible because of lack of offline authentication feature. And also 9 out of 10 cards, different 9, uh, were vulnerable to this attack. One bank I was happily, uh, I was really proud when I found that one bank out of 10 uh, was not vulnerable, which is good, but it's still extremely bad, especially thinking that EMV and NFC is the more secure form of payments and everyone uh, is pushing to use it. So if you look at the whole picture, you see that cryptocurrency card holders uh, and cryptocurrency startups actually have so little power over this well-established payment industry. So issues I, I talked about today yeah, and in our white paper a lot of startups have bug bounty programs. I reported about these issues there. Then startup come back and realizes that they actually uh, then they can't they, they don't do these uh, card checks. The yeah, they outsource it to a service provider uh, and they go to the service provider to ask, okay, this is the issue. Uh, we got report about what should we do. The provider says, hey, I've been certified, uh, I've, I've done everything as Visa and MasterCard told me to do, yeah, I have a PCI compliance uh, assessments and so on and so on, and here we go. We are in a situation where customers with vulnerable cards and no one can do anything because guys on top say everything is fine. Yeah, and, and, and you as a cardholder or as a crypto startup have to bear with some of the issues which are 50 years old, right? So this is really, really bad. Uh, thanks so much. Find us on Discord channel or online Twitter, email, and our video will be published on paymentvillage.org. Thank you. Have a nice day.